This may be a first. I cannot remember the last time one singular event impacted my two favorite teams, the Montreal Canadiens, or the Vancouver Canucks, excuse me, gotta say them first, they're first, and my second favorite team, the Montreal Canadiens. It's been so long since one piece of news has impacted both of these teams in an extraordinarily positive way. Off the top of my head, I feel like the only time this ever happened was when it was announced in 2020 that there would be a play-in series rather than just cutting off the top 16 teams. Because with that in mind, the Vancouver Canucks and Montreal Canadiens were both able to find themselves into the regular 2020 playoffs in the bubble, despite not really being too close in that race. But aside from that, this might be the only other time one event has made both of these teams' fan bases happy. Today, we are talking about 2024 draft-eligible prospect Cole Iserman. And don't worry, this is not the Why I Want video, this is not a deep dive into what it is he presents as a prospect. We already made one video, just kind of going over Iserman in a very brief manner. It was the 2024 mock draft from a few weeks ago. As the year goes on and as these prospects are going to start playing, we're going to have more conversations for sure. But for now, Cole Eiserman, all you need to know about this guy, he's 17 years old, he's 6 feet 196, he is the consolidated ranked second overall prospect in next year's draft. Number two by Daily Faceoff, number two by Bob McKenzie, number two by the Hockey News. This is a goal scorer, through and through, and if you take a look at his numbers from the past few seasons, you'll recognize that in last year's worth of play, he played for the US NTDP's U18 team at only 16 years old, so a double underage player. And in the sample, he had 26 goals in 20 games. Oh my goodness. Now, he had six assists. So you could really see how much of a goal scorer this guy is in comparison to a pure playmaker. This season, though, at the time of recording this audio, Iserman playing for the US NTGP's U18 team has eight points in four games played, and he is on pace for 150-something points. He also has five goals in four games, so there you go. Cole Iserman is still going out there and dominating the score sheet with his goal production. Now, the reason Iserman is in the news is because earlier this week, it was revealed that his future was not going to be all too certain. You see, the initial plan was for Cole Iserman to play this season in the US NTDP because he's only 17 years old, and then next season, the plan was for him to go to the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers. But we had ourselves word that he was considering to opt out of the Minnesota program. Word from Cam Robinson here said that the Massachusetts native was aiming for a spot closer to home. We see you, BU. Give it a few minutes, and eventually it's revealed on Instagram that Cole Eiserman is going to Boston University. And if you take a look at his season and where everything's projected to go, he will be old enough to first play for the BU Terriers in 24-25. Now, I get it, there are some things that might be wrong with that sentence that I just said, but we'll get to that as the video goes on. The reason this is a really big deal is because the BU Terriers have two prospects that I think Canucks fans and Canadians fans care so much about. On Montreal, you have Lane Hudson, who was an absolute stud last season in the NCAA and who was looking to continue his reign of terror amongst the collegiate scene. And... Most likely going to be his D pairing is Vancouver Canucks prospect Tom Villander, taken in the 11th overall spot in this year's draft. Now, Villander is going to have to sit out the first game in the season because he had played pro hockey in the SHL last year, but Villander is going to go over to BU and not only be surrounded by guys like Lane Hudson, who are very good on the point, but guys like Macklin Celebrini and Cole Eiserman too. Now, Villander is not going to play one year of NCAA hockey and then come to the NHL right away. He'll probably spend a few seasons in the BU system before coming over and signing a pro deal, which gives him so much opportunity to feed off of what it is Celebrini and Iserman are going to be able to do. Not to mention that Lane Hudson that is going to be doing his thing in this upcoming season as well. Cole Eiserman, who is a top prospect in 2024, decommitting from Minnesota and going over to BU, where the first overall, Macklin Celebrini, is already going to go, makes this team an absolute powerhouse. They were arguably already number one in the rankings, but with this addition, things could be changing for the better. Now, the thing is, when you think about the 
situation over here. I get some of y'all might be thinking, wait a minute, Cole Eiserman was born in August of 2006. He's 17 years old. What's the deal with the NCAA? Because Macklin Celebrini is a June-born 2006 player. He's also 17, but it says that Celebrini is going to be playing with BU this upcoming year. How is that possible? He's 17 years old. He hasn't graduated high school yet. That's why Iserman is playing in the NTDP and not the NCAA right now, right? And normally, that understanding would be correct. Technically, Macklin Celebrini is too young to play in the NCAA, but the thing is, Celebrini has had a very particular set of education. He had accelerated schooling with the primary intention of being able to enter the NCAA before everybody else in his age range. This is something that you don't really see many players ever execute, but Celebrini went out there and did that. It's why Celebrini is on the team for 23-24 on Elite Prospects, but Cole Eiserman, hey, his first NCAA eligible season would actually be 24-25, because at that point he would have been 18, he would have graduated high school, and he would have been entering college. It's kind of similar to how regular life works, you know? You enter college at 18, after your 17-year-old senior year, and everything works out the way it does. But for Celebrini, he's going to have the head start of playing with Tom Villander, being able to play with Lane Hudson as well. In 2024-25, when Cole Eiserman eventually makes his way onto the team too, it's going to be intriguing to see who still remains because Macklin Celebrini could very much go first overall in a 2024 draft, sign his ELC and play in the NHL right away. And Lane Hudson might miss out in 24-25 as well, because if he's so good in 23-24 this upcoming season, then Hudson might just go to the AHL and then maybe play in the NHL. For Tom Villander, though, Vancouver Canucks prospect, this is pretty good because this will give him an opportunity to pretty much play with everybody. He'll play with Celebrini, he'll play with Hudson this upcoming year. If those two guys leave and then Cole Eiserman comes in, then okay, that's nice to see. Iserman gets some time with Villander as well. It's going to be nice to see Villander racking up the assist because just getting the puck up to these guys and having Iserman score like a hat trick a game is going to be really great for his point production. It's just super unfortunate that this accelerated schooling didn't really happen to Iserman. I mean, the Cam Robinson tweet goes out there and says it all that Iserman is heading over to BU. There is a chance that he'll reunite with his old buddy Macklin Celebrini next season, depending on if Celebrini decides to stay in the NCAA in 2425. If Celebrini decides to stay, though, and you have Iserman and Celebrini together, then you have yourselves a recipe for success. The reason we're saying that is because, hey, firstly, it's a great pairing. Macklin Celebrini with the playmaking edge and Iserman with the goal scoring, but also because this is a formula that works. And it worked in 2021 when you had the Shattuck St. Mary's U18 prep school play Iserman and Celebrini on the same line. Now, you also had William Whitelaw, Columbus Blue Jackets prospect that was eventually taken in the 2023 draft third round, also play with that squad. But right away, you could see a connection is being made there. And for Tom Villander, Vancouver Canucks prospect, he is going to be in the backseat of everything, just watching and feeling everything as it goes by. For Lane Hudson, Montreal guy, it would be nice to see him play with Iserman if he spends another year with BU, but for now, I mean, just having Celebrini as the guy to pass the puck up to and feed off of, that's going to be crazy. If all these guys, Celebrini, Villander, Iserman, and Hudson all just decide to stay for another extra year and dominate the NCAA in 24-25, then that would be the best case scenario for all of us fantasy prospect nerds who want to see how many points these guys could get together. Because one power play unit of Iserman, Macklin Celebrini, Hudson Villander, and whomever else sounds like it could tear down and take over the entire country in terms of NCAA play. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Cole Eiserman heading over to BU? Again, he can't do this right away. He'll have to wait till next season before he's eligible to play in the NCAA. Macklin Celebrini had accelerated schooling, which is why he's able to do that now. If Celebrini decides to stick around a year after his draft eligible season and play even further with all these guys, it would be beneficial as hell. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you're a Canucks fan cheering for Volander, if you're a Canadians fan cheering for Hudson, how do you feel about Eiserman? and Celebrini potentially being reunited with this team. Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishaj Rolls 99. And bye.